Where do we go from here? Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for our special guest, Dr. LJ Johnson. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I just got the red carpet on that. I'm like, okay, okay. I love right. it. So, Dr. Johnson, I can read a bio easily. I can tell people and read off of your website, you know, what's going on. But can you take a second or two and just let the listeners and the viewers watching this live a little bit about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. And I want to say thank you first for having me here. Super excited. I am Dr. LJ Johnson, the holistic hormone expert. I specialize in everything women's health, specifically when it comes to the not so sexy stuff that we sometimes deal with, having a uterus when it comes to dealing with endometriosis, PCOS, and fibroids, all things hormones, all things health. I'm super excited about today's episode because I know we're going to be delving into endometriosis, which many people, especially women of color, are dealing with and have absolutely no idea what's going on, right? So that just one question. For some of you, you're like, baby, I got all kinds of questions because I'm having all kinds of issues. And so I, you know, I say this in the beginning, I say it a lot. I'm not coming from the high horse of this is what I've learned in school and this is what's going to work for everybody. Baby, I come from that low horse that been there, done that horse. Yes, I got the book knowledge and the education, but I also have firsthand experience of what it's like to manage a chronic illness as, a, you know, as I'm dealing with endometriosis. And I really want to educate, empower and motivate you so that you can get in the driver's seat of your health to really live an amazing life despite your diagnosis. This is exactly why I wanted to do this. And I love that because there are sometimes I love saying we don't know what we don't know until right. we know. So someone I have a feeling out there is sitting out there, maybe having some of these symptoms or something. And especially in our culture, we are it's suffered through the pain. Yes. And, and I can also speak from a men's a man's point of view. Um, hey, if you, you're bleeding. Nope, then get up and just walk, right? So right. we just learn to suffer through it. And so I, I believe that if we can bring knowledge to this, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to worry about because it, it's natural. It's something that's just in us and maybe we can go and find some ways about it. So will you tell the people how maybe you came upon this? How, how did it affect or how did you get into this field? Did, was there anything that uh, brought it light to light for you? Absolutely. Um, you know, I wish, I and mean, everyone's story is different, not knocking anyone's story, but I'll be very honest. You know, I love when people are like, one day I woke up and this was my vision and this was my business. Yes, I woke up and I knew I had a calling on my life from God. I knew that I was here to help people. I knew that I was there to pour into my community, but it was my own challenges that shifted my practice. I, you know, I have to be very honest. I spent a lot of time in health and wellness and fitness, and I was working on the aesthetics of the body, right? How to get those muscles, how to get slim thick, you know, how to lose weight, this, that, and the other. And I have to be very honest, somehow along the journey, all those tricks, all those tips, baby, I'm all about results stopped working for me. I started to travel the world telling everyone all of these amazing things, but I was either on stage, you know, feeling like a million dollars and traveling the world, or I was on Mattress Island, AKA stuck in my bed, not being able to move, having menstrual issues, passing out during my periods, all of these things. So it was either 110% and you were getting the amazing LJ, or it was me hiding in plain sight suffering. And so that is what shifted and pivoted my business. Like I said, I loved what I did, but all of a sudden my health that I had kind of put in the back seat, which is why I'm always saying getting in the driver's seat of your health, my health that I was putting in the back seat, I could no longer put in the back seat. For me, I was having a lot of hormonal issues. My body was at war. My body was not reliable. And that is what shifted my entire world, not just my business, but my personal life, my social life, my career, my everything. And as a single parent, not being able to show up and show out and have this amazing energy and raise your children. Um, it was very pivotal for me at that point. And it's something that I think even as, because I've had this question asked to me, right? I love the promotion of just whatever can work for someone. So I've had people who've written in to the show and they've asked, so you're a guy, but you're bringing on women talking about some women issues. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's that way. I think this still affects everyone. Maybe oh, I'm not feeling what you're affecting, but if I'm your spouse, if I'm your boyfriend, whatever, your partner, your girlfriend, what you're going through, I need to learn how to give you space or 
maybe even help you in those moments. So what can you say to someone who is going through the endometrius, but also to a partner of ways they can help or learn because they may not know exactly what they have? That's a good question. And what I will do is I'll circle back to what actually is endometriosis, because some of you are like endo, supercala, what, what? I know it's a lot. Endometriosis, a long word. The title's up there, but endo for short, E-N-D-O, endo, right? That is the short name of endometriosis. So endometriosis is not a period problem. It is not a reproductive disorder. It is uterine-like tissue found outside of your uterus. It is hormonally driven. It is, you know, has autoimmune-like factors, and it causes chronic systemic inflammation throughout your entire body. Now, it can affect your cycle. It can affect your period. You may have extremely heavy bleeding, clotting, passing out during your cycle, that cycle that, you know, knocks you on your butt where you're like, oh, if my period starts today, baby, I ain't making it to work. I'm stuck in the bed. I'm passing out. I'm vomiting. I'm super sick. Um, There's so many things that go on with endometriosis, but I wanted to give the definition because some of you are like, okay, I know what endo is. Get to the tips, get to the, you know, the hacks or whatever. And then others are like, I've been having these murder scene periods. I've been passing out during my cycle, you know, the hormonal bleeding, the, you know, the painful sex, the pain outside of my period. I've been having these things for years and you're, you've normalized it. And so for some of you, you're like, I don't know if I have endometriosis, but baby, something's not right. So I want to say that if you have the diagnosis, you know, stick with this. We'll definitely talk tips and tricks, but I definitely want to speak to that question that you had, but I wanted to define endometriosis because many people have no idea what it is. Now I want to circle back and a little bit louder for the people in the back, because typically when people think of endometriosis, they're like, oh, it's a period problem, you know, toughen up, baby, you got a uterus. That's just how it is. I'm here to tell you right now, normalizing period pain. And I'll speak as a strong black woman. I remember when I first complained to my mom about period pain and, you know, passing out and all that, I got set down. Um, You know, I was a strong black woman was a speech I got. I also was a pastor's kid. So I was told to toughen up on my faith, get closer to God. And I think all those things are amazing, but baby, I couldn't walk some days, right? I don't know that the fact that I hadn't memorized the entire Bible didn't mean that I didn't have faith. It didn't mean that there was something wrong with me, but there was something going on with my body, right? So we normalize the pain. Um, endometriosis is it impacts every part of your life. So circling back to your question of how can you support someone that has endometriosis? Well, we first defined it because a lot of people don't understand what it is. You think it's a period problem, but when we talk about that chronic systemic inflammation, it's throughout your entire body. So it's not just period pain. It's not just bloating here and there. There could be pain in your joints, right? There could be painful sex. You could be having heavy periods. You could be having a lot lot of abdominal pain and cramping. You could be having issues with your bowels, with your bladder. Like I said, there could be joint pain. For me, one of the issues that I had was a lot of inflammation in my ear, nose, and throat. So I always had a lot of sinus infections. I was always, I was that person that was always sick, right? You know, some people are like, girl, you always sick. I was that girl. My body, every the wind could blow when I had a cold, right? It didn't matter what I did, no matter what I did, my immune system was under attack. And that's because endometriosis has those autoimmune like factors. Now, for you that have endometriosis, I'm sure you're like, give us the tips on how to support my, you know, how my partner can support me. Or you're the partner that's like, hey, you know, my wife, my girlfriend, whatever, you know, has endometriosis, we're having struggles, I don't know what to do. The first thing that I would say is talk and communicate with your partner, because this is the thing. And I'm speaking from my own experience of things I did wrong, right? When I was married, my ex-husband did not understand what was going on with my body. And then I also have to take some responsibility. I was not really being transparent and voicing to him how everything was playing out for me. You know, he just thought it was a bad period. So he's like, oh, once a month, she won't feel well. It was me explaining to him that each day I was dealing with pain throughout my body, systemic pain. You know, I was dealing with brain fog. You know, I was trying to take care of the kids and, you know, starting to pack a lunch, then forgetting what I was doing, then started to vacuum and then figure out I hadn't did this. And it was like, my brain was all over, right? So I had all of these issues. So for the me, the biggest thing that I would tell people is communicate with your partner what you need communicate with them right now and this is a conversation i just had with my boyfriend right communicate what you need but let them know how you're feeling 
not just when you're in pain, right? Because that's not the best time to be snapping on your family, right? Or trying to have a family meeting when you're in pain, right? When you're in a painful flare, that's the time you want to grab that toolbox, grab those tools and really work with the painful flare, but communicate with your partner, how you're feeling, what is going on so they can support you. Now, this is what you have to remember. Just because you're giving them all that information, they may not know what to do. I've had partners that are like, my wife is in pain. She's doubled over. I don't know what to do. Do I give her the pain pills? Do I buy her the chocolate? Because, you know, media says, you know, when you were on your period, you need chocolate and dairy and all these things. And it's like, sometimes that's not what we need. So having those conversations, letting your partner know how you feel. And then if you're that partner that's on that receiving end, it's being open to listen. And the biggest thing I'll say is, do not take everything personal, right? Do not feel like they're personally attacking you. Yes, they may be angry. You know, they may be cussing. They may be acting a fool. Their hormones and their everything may be all over. But even in that moment, be sure to give your partner that grace and that support because it is very painful. And there are times that we're just as frustrated. You're frustrated with us because maybe we didn't go to work that day. You're frustrated because the dinner's not ready. The kids aren't taken care of. But I want you to just think about it and give some additional grace to your partner because she's just as frustrated too that she didn't wasn't able to go to work, that she's not able to have dinner ready for you and the children, that she's in pain. You know, maybe she's frustrated just as much as you are that she wasn't able to go to the soccer game or to the family events or the barbecue, whatever this weekend. So it's being able to really communicate what's going on, not just, hey, when I'm in a flare, leave me alone. But hey, when I'm in a flare, it's really helpful if you help with the kids around the house. It's really helpful if, you know, I have my hot water bottle or, hey, these are some foods that are really helpful for me. It's being able to communicate. And I think what happens typically is people want to either ramp up the communication when you're in a flare. So it's just all very negative and sharp. And let's be honest, right? All that extra attitude is probably not helping your situation, even though that's how you feel. So just being able to communicate and be open. And then for the partner, just really and truly, you know, not giving a blanket excuse for how anyone's acting, but giving them additional grace because the same way that you're upset and disappointed and you want to help, they're feeling that probably a hundred times fold because they're upset and frustrated with their body as well. This is like dropping so much knowledge. I'm over here taking notes and learning <laughs> because as you're speaking on that, right, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, do I know anyone who may have right. that? And, and what really came to my mind when I said that to myself is I probably don't because one, if someone is going through that, they're mm -hmm. probably not, expressing it to a family member i'm thinking to oh, myself absolutely. do any of my cousins have that do my, does my sister have it or whatever mm -hmm. i don't know because i can see that this may be something that they don't want to speak on and this is one reason why i love doing this show because i i want to take away the stigma that we yes. need to openly talk about and understand that there's issues that happen to us that it's not our fault it's just medical right. there's no reason to be ashamed of it I know we're not going to go and promote it to everyone in the world, right? Mm -hmm. But as you're saying that, maybe express that to people who are in your circle or in your world that you feel comfortable with enough to say, like you were saying, this is what I need from you mm -hmm. when I'm going through this. Because if you never tell them, I can see how that may lead to arguments and someone thinking he or she's not there for me. And I love that. And if there is someone who is listening to you right now and wants to know how can I get in touch with you? Is there ways I can maybe speak to her and write her and just ask her for more information? What are some ways that they can do that? Absolutely. Um, definitely. You're on this podcast, right? So that's step one. You're educating yourself. You're advocating for yourself. You're getting motivated. But this is the thing, right? Faith without works is dead. You're going to have to put some actions in, right? The pedal to the metal. So if you're looking to make changes, number one, stay connected. Follow this podcast, download it. You'll see in the show notes, all of that stuff. I would say go to my Instagram account. Because sometimes you still need a little more information. You're like, okay, I'm buying it. I'm not crazy. This is really happening. You can go to my Instagram, which is up there, LJS underscore powerhouse. And there's tons of free content. It tells you more about what endometriosis is, 
what it's not, some of the misconceptions, because I think some of the misconceptions is what we get so much of. And it's like, okay, we have the misconceptions and then we have the don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. But the other issue is that when you're doing all of that, right, you're like, what can I do? What can I eat? What can I drink? Right. So now I, like I said, my Instagram is a great resource, but it's not cookie cutter. Right. So a lot of the information on there may be generic, but if you're looking for more specific, you're like, Hey, LJ, I've been dealing with this for years. I'm tired of missing work. I'm tired of not, you know, being able to excel in my business and my career. I'm tired of missing out on life. Now, if you're at that point, then I would say it's time to work with me. You want to go to my Instagram account and you can click on that link and click work with me, or we'll put the link in the show notes and you guys can book a call with me. No pressure. It's a free discovery call. And that discovery call really just lets us have a conversation about what's going on. Because here's the thing, endometriosis looks different for every single patient. There is, you could line up 10 people that had endometriosis. We could all tell our stories, 10 totally different stories, right? Which is okay. It's totally okay, but that is why I do specialized training. I don't do, you know, a lot of group coaching or cookie cutter stuff because every single patient is different. The biggest thing is educating yourself, right? You're like I said, you're on this podcast. You can go to my Instagram account, but if you're past the education phase and you're like, I'm ready to make some moves, like get me to the money, right? Get me to the bag, get me to where I am able to live a pain-free life then we need to hop on that call. I mean, I do also have a podcast. I'm going to plug my podcast because obviously you love podcasts if you're listening to this one, but it's the holistic with the W holistic endo expert podcast. And I talk all things endometriosis. I also talk about PCOS and fibroids because many of my endo sisters, my endo warriors have other hormonal imbalances and other things going on in their body. I absolutely love that. And it it means so much to me. Yes. Plug away because Everyone who listens to me knows that I am all about win-win. I have a win-win mentality. I do not have that crabs in a bucket mentality. Let me pull you back. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're listening to this, go listen to hers. There's enough airs to go around in this world because whatever information that we are presenting today, if there's anything that can help you, help a family member, help anyone that's maybe extended that you say to yourself, I've got a friend who sounds like they go through something like this. They may not be aware let me go Google and help them, right? Then that's what we're here for. I right. absolutely love it because I work to destigmatize the things that we aren't supposed to say. Society says, no, don't talk about that. You know, why? Things have changed. We're in 2022 and we're moving forward, right? And especially if you're in the African American culture, the black culture, it is something that we have to get rid of. And if it's your health, Who cares what anyone else thinks? Take care of yourself. What do you think I've missed? Anything that else you'd like to share um, to the people? And and, and I'll say this before you get into that. Another reason why I'm literally taking notes here and I'm loving this is because I hear your passion. I hear when you're speaking about not the cookie kind of thing. I see so many coaches when I see advertisements come to my coach and, and it just feels like they just want you to sign up for money. So right. let us know anything you miss. Oh, excuse me, anything I miss that you'd like to reiterate or bring out. And then we're going to get ready for the wrap up. No, uh, you did a great job. I would just say, I want to talk a little bit about the passion and here's the thing, right? Yes, this is my business. Yes. I offer paid services, but here's the deal. If only one person listened to this podcast and it's like that wide open moment where you're like, Oh my gosh, this is me. I'm not crazy. And it allows you to go to the doctor and get the treatment that you need. It allows you to educate yourself, to go to my Instagram and start doing some of these things to get quality of life. That is why I do what I do. And why I'm so passionate about it is because it rocked my world. Like I said, I was that professional standing up on stage and honey, I was doing all the things traveling. But when I wasn't able to show up like that, I was literally hiding in plain sight. I wasn't being fake but I was hiding in plain sight. I was not comfortable letting people know, Hey, I'd love to do this, that, and the other, but you know, my body requires me to have extra sleep or I need to eat organic or you know what? I can't have lasagna because it doesn't work for my body, right? Like I was just going with the flow. I didn't want to upset anyone, but in the end, my body was suffering. And so I've had to give up so many things and 
the reason I do this is so you don't have to give up a job like I had to do, right? You don't have to try to, you know, do all the things I had to do. You know, you don't have to keep sleeping on the couch, real talk, you know, every day because you're in too much pain to walk up your stairs. Like that's the life I came from. Not being able to take care of my own children, having to text a neighbor. I mean, let's talk about something humbling, having to text a neighbor to get my children ready because my body was unreliable. I couldn't rely on my body. I would say things like I hated my body. I hated my uterus. And it really wasn't that I hated it. I just didn't know what was going on. Number one, once I got the diagnosis, I didn't have someone helping me create a plan. And so that is what I do is really just help you create a plan. I cannot cure your disease. And I will say that I can definitely put you in the driver's seat where you can heal yourself naturally, but that looks different for everyone. But my, I think I would say in my closing remarks, I'm like, what can I say? There's so many different things. I would say, despite your diagnosis, please know that you can have an amazing life, right? You just have to tap in, get your toolbox, be willing to do the work, and you are more than your diagnosis. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely love it. And as I always tell you, this the podcast, this entity that we're working to do, this is a safe place to be a little dangerous, right? Yes. This is a safe place to talk about issues that you won't talk about in anywhere else. And we love it. So keep sending in your questions. Keep sending in the things that you're wanting us to speak about. I'm I'm so enjoyable about it. Um, will you hold on for one second with me, Dr. Johnson? I'm going to go ahead and do this housekeeping, and then I'm going to come right back to you and I, okay? Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Just One Question. We sincerely appreciate you for listening, because without you, I would simply be talking to myself Although my wife says I probably would enjoy that as well. So I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, like I say, make sure you keep living while you are alive. Mm -hmm.